Hey everyone, this is Steve from the App Innovation Global Black Belt team. Today in Azure Guides, we're going to talk about the Key Vault CSI driver. We'll talk about why you would use it, how you install it, and actually do a demo of it, of it running. And in particular, for this walkthrough, we're going to use workload identity to access secrets. So taking an application that needs to access a secret that's stored in Key Vault and accessing that via a workload identity. If you haven't already seen the workload identity video, we'll link to that below. You should go take a look at that. Uh, and let's jump into it. So the Key Vault CSI driver is an open source project. It's been around for a little while now. Um, you can install it directly from the open source project yourself, uh, or you can use a managed add-on in AKS. You know, so you might say, you know, why would I use a Key Vault CSI driver? What's the purpose of it? Uh, so applications need access to secrets. It might be database connection strings or passwords, whatever it may be. And you want to store those things in a protected way. Uh, you could store them in Kubernetes secrets, but I think most of us know that Kubernetes secrets by default aren't really all that secure. So putting them into an external secret store is a good idea, especially one that can be backed by something like a hardware security module and provide you a lot of additional protection and features on top of that secret store. Azure Key Vault is the Azure native secret store, uh, and the Key Vault CSI driver provides a way for the Kubernetes cluster to access that Key Vault through the CSI interface, right? So essentially using the container stores interface to access that. So you mount a volume into your workload, and that volume will then access Key Vault and retrieve that secret for you, give you access to that secret. This supports both Linux and Windows containers. Uh, you can actually take those secrets and mount them into Kubernetes secrets, or sync them, I should say, to Kubernetes secrets, which we'll show a little bit later. And there's a number of other features you can tap into. So as I mentioned, you could install this yourself, or you can use the managed add-on from AKS. The nice thing about the managed add-on is that you know, we'll maintain the you know, uh, updates and patching to that add-on for you, so you don't have to worry about updating that or redeploying the home chart or anything like that. Um, so really nice... Uh, capability built into AKS for you. Uh, the AKS docs do show you how to set this all up, so you could run through this. Uh, for our purposes, we're gonna run through this blog post that, that our team created that shows how to set this up, how to create a cluster with this enabled, uh, and then how to use workload identity to access a, uh, a key vault. So let's jump into that. So we'll just grab this set of commands. First, we're gonna set a bunch of uh, environment variables here. We're gonna create a resource group and then we'll create the AKS cluster. So I'll go ahead and Fire this off. While that's running, let's talk about what the different parameters are that are being set here. So resource group name, location, cluster name, obviously. Uh, these two parameters, actually, I'm going to remove. The, you don't actually need those anymore. Uh, we're not setting ACR for this. We're going to use a straight Ubuntu pod for this, so we don't need access to an Azure Container Registry. Uh, we are going to create a key vault, so we need to give the key vault a name. And we need that to be unique ID, a unique name as well. So we create the resource group and then we create the AKS cluster. The AKS cluster has a few features enabled. You obviously need the Key Vault CSI driver enabled. Uh, for our walkthrough, we're actually going to use workload identity as well. So again, you can jump back to that prior video and see how that works. But there's two components of workload identity that we need to leverage here. So one is workload identity itself. And the second is the OIDC issuer. So OIDC issuer is how Entra ID, formerly Azure Active Directory, uh, can validate tokens that are received from the cluster that are generated by the cluster. Okay. Once that cluster is uh, up and running, we'll jump into the next section. So let's take a look at this. This will take a minute, so I'm just going to pause here. And once the cluster is ready, we'll start back up. Okay, our cluster is ready. So let's uh, keep going. So the next part of this, we're going to set up the identity. So as I mentioned before, we can use workload identity. So we have a couple steps to do there. First is to get the OIDC issuer URL. So that's the URL that will be used by Entra ID to verify any tokens that are issued by this cluster. We're going to get the identity tenant, which is my tenant ID here, which will be used later. And we're going to create a managed identity. So you could use a service principle here, um, but managed identities are a bit more secure, right? Because you don't have to worry about the secret for the, the identity or anything like that. It's all managed for you uh, by nature of it being associated to an Azure resource. Now I'll get the client ID for that managed identity. And we're going to create the service account. So part of the magic of workload identity is that you have a service account on the Kubernetes side, and you associate that to a managed identity in the Azure side. And the way you do that is first by associating that workload identity's client ID uh, to the service account and setting workload and use to true. And the second part is where the real magic, when magic happens, which is this federated credential create command. All right, so what this does, if you take a look at it, is it takes the identity that we created, the managed identity, and creates an association to a Kubernetes service account. So this is, I'm just using my default namespace here. 
uh, and here's the name of the service account we just created. Uh, and here's the OIDC issuer. So that's how Enter ID will know, hey, if I receive a token for this subject, it can then go back, validate against this OIDC issuer that the token is valid, and then say, yeah, this is a valid token and it's associated to this managed ID. All right. So next up here is we're gonna create a key vault. This might take a minute, so let me fire this command off and we'll do a quick pause. Okay, our key vault created successfully. We're gonna set a secret. All right, so we're just gonna set a secret called test secret. It's gonna say hello from key vault. I'm going to grant read access or get access, I should say, for that secret for our managed identity. So that's the same managed identity we created previously. Now, optionally, we're, you can use version IDs. I do like using version IDs with my secrets. Uh, it just gives you a little bit more capability around you know, rolling out new changes to the secret uh, and things like that. You don't have to, it's optional, but we are gonna set that here for, for our demo purposes. So I'm gonna grab that version ID here. There's probably a more elegant way to do this. All right. Now here's where the binding between the secret in Kubernetes and the secret in Key Vault happens. Let's grab this command and then I'll kind of, as this is running, I'll jump back and we'll talk through what this is. All right. So in this file, it's a secret provider class. Give it a name, specify that the provider is Azure. Uh, we're going to say that we're not using pod identity. Pod identity has been deprecated, so we don't need that anymore. We're going to specify the client ID that should be used to access the secret, the vault name, and then some details about the secret itself. So the object is test secret. It is a secret. And we are going to pass in the version ID, and we'll pass in the tenant ID as well. Okay. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and deploy a pod that uses this. So this pod, standard Kubernetes pod, we are going to specify that it should use workload identity. Uh, we are going to specify the service account name. Again, that's how workload identity is going to get tied in here. We're using that service account that we federated to our managed identity. This is just going to be a straight Ubuntu pod. It's just going to infinite loop here. But this is where that CSI driver component comes into play, right? So we're going to do a volume mount to this slash MNT secret store. And we're going to associate that volume to our storage provider class that we created above. So let's go ahead and grab this. Clear my screen here. There's my pod creating. And now let's go ahead and check. We can exec into that pod and let's grab that secret. So this command, we're just gonna exec into the pod. We're gonna cat the file at slash MNT secret store test secret. There we are. Hello from Key Vault. Awesome. So our connectivity is working. It's using the workload identity to access that, that pod and uh, sorry, to access that secret in Key Vault. Now we can take it a step further. You know, uh, mounting from volumes is great. Um, if you have, say, a connection string or something like that, you can you can have scripts that then load that. You know, but you might want to put that into an environment variable. Uh, sorry, into a Kubernetes secret, which then gives you the ability to put it into an environment variable. So it's really the same secret provider class with just slightly different uh, configuration here. So we can do secret objects definition right here. So this secret objects definition is going to allow you to create a Kubernetes secret off of this same secret that we have in Key Vault. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. This is gonna be a separate secret provider class, but it could have been could have been the same one. Okay, so that secret provider class was created. Now, if I jump down here, I, I can mount that secret. Actually, let me look, take a look through this really quick. So again, same thing, we're gonna use workload identity. Here's the service account name that we're gonna use, just a pod that runs an infinite loop. We're gonna mount that same secret that we did previously but to take it a step further, we're going to have this secret data mounted from a Kubernetes secret as well. All right, that created successfully. That looks good, it's running with secret sync. And so we can test a few things. So first thing we can do is let's actually, again, check and make sure that volume is still mounted correctly. All right, so there's the data coming from the volume. Now we can check to make sure that Kubernetes actually has the secret as well. So here we're just gonna get secret from Kubernetes and we're just gonna base64 decode that. There we go. So we now we see there's a Kubernetes secret with that value in it. And then finally, let's actually see if the environment variable that we created also got the secret. And it did. So now we have the data both as a mounted volume, we have it as a Kubernetes secret, 
And we have it as a Kubernetes secret that's been mounted into a environment variable in the pod. So a bunch of different ways you can access that secret. All of them are using workload identity to access that. So you have a nice secure way to retrieve secrets from your key vault secret store uh, from your Kubernetes workload. So with that, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at a little bit of a dive into the key vault CSI driver and seeing how it works. Take a look at the blog, run through it, test it out yourself, and uh, um, hope this helped you out. Have a good one.